my voice tends to bounce off the roofs of those a little bit. I uh, hope your day is going well. Uh, mine is going, at least it was going. It's not going any more at the moment because uh, there's precious little reason to go any further uh, because I don't have any lights. Um, we thought we'd fix the light problem, but it turns out there are two light issues with the bus. So uh, thank you to Tony uh, who fixed light problem number one. Uh, but it now seems that we've got a separate issue that is just on our headlight fuse and it keeps blowing that 30 amp maxi fuse like no tomorrow. So uh, speaking of tomorrow, who knew Albury could be so full of auto electricians and have all of them so busy? I uh, spent some time this morning in Yass trying to ring ahead uh, to see if I could get somebody to have a look at this issue. And unfortunately, they're all flat out until next week. Uh, I left a message with one bloke who rang me back about half an hour ago and just as I was sort of getting into Albury and said, uh, mate, I can see in the morning. So good enough for me. Uh, there's no point pulling up on the side of the road and being stuck in the dark uh, in the middle of nowhere. So I'll hang out in Albury tonight. And, uh, and in Wodonga in the morning, I'll get my lights sorted. Fingers crossed. G'day, Paul. G'day, uh, Dennis. Sandra, uh, the lovely sunflower, hello darling. I haven't caught up with Daniel. Daniel, Daniel, Daniel. If you're watching this either live now or um, later on, please email me, carl at vofhq.com with your phone number. I need to see you when I'm back in Canberra. I'm not there now, but I will be back at the end of the month and I'm staying a few days. So uh, let's try and get together and, uh, and catch up. That would be awesome. Uh, hello, Michelle. You're in town too. And uh, Paul, I think I said hello like today. Paul, Spring Tree. Oh, there you are, Daniel. Uh, yep, you can't afford a phone. <laughs> right. Well, send me an email with your address then, and I'll email you back with um, uh, details of when and where I'm going to be, and I'll come find you. Uh, so, uh, very keen to catch up, mate. G'day, David. How's things in Harvey Bay? Hope things are nice up there. Uh, no, another few weeks I might be uh, cruising through Harvey Bay, fingers crossed. Um, I, I suspect that part of the issue with these headlights may well be something related to the heat issue that we have with the other ones. So might be, uh, I might be here another day yet. We'll see what happens. Um, could be here over the weekend. Uh, that would certainly put a little damper on things because there are some pretty big things happening where I was going to be over the weekend. In fact, on uh, Saturday morning, Bacchus Marsh, the 20th, Craig Cole will be in the main street of Bacchus Marsh wandering up and down. I think he's going to be addressing the, the townsfolk about the issues facing our children and the criminality that's being enacted against them. I was very keen to, uh, to get to that, catch up with Craig and have a bit of a chat. Uh, not saying I'm not going to yet, but a lot is going to hinge on whether or not these lights can be fixed tomorrow and early tomorrow. I have some other commitments, family stuff I've got to try and do. and. Uh, fingers crossed that can happen tomorrow. That would have happened tonight uh, had I have uh, been able to keep going, but it's going to be well dark in kangaroo country before I get there, so I'm not interested in driving around in kangaroo country at dark, uh, or going through dark, and certainly with no lights. Uh, so yeah, I'll have to bump that back a day, which means everything gets kicked a bit. But I did have a day up my sleeve for just such an uh, occurrence. So fingers crossed we'll get out of here early tomorrow morning and, uh, and it doesn't cost two arms and a leg to get it fixed. That's probably the biggest concern. Um, and then, uh, yeah, we'll be heading back into Victoria and uh, Craig's thing, Bacchus Marsh, Saturday morning. Sunday at the Polish Club in uh, Melton, you will find Doris and Maddie from my place, Melton, having a huge, and I mean huge, market day. Uh, I am going to be aiming to get to there for that one too. So if I can't make Craig because of this lighting thing, uh, I will definitely be in Bacchus Marsh, or I beg your pardon, in Melton on the 21st for the market day in the morning. Um, and I think it goes through till one or possibly even two o'clock in the afternoon. There'll be music, there'll be dancing, there'll be songs to be sung. Uh, but most of all, there'll be a lot of great, great things for sale from uh, handmade to, you know, uh, other little businesses. Uh, some magnificent, and of course, you know from the girls previously, if you've been watching the show, uh, both Maddie and Doris 
have a range of natural uh, cleaners and both for yourself and for your house. Uh, they filled me up last time. Um, so I'm looking forward to catching up with them too. That'll be Sunday the 21st in Melton and I will get you the address for the Polish Club uh, as it sort of uh, comes a little closer. It's on my iPad, I'm just uh, not there with it at the moment. Uh, so that's the plan for that. And then of course, uh, Wednesday, oh sorry, the 23rd, we're heading into Ballarat to start the Ainsley Bullion uh, seminar show with Cass from Freedom Financial Solutions FFS. Uh, so if you are interested in self-managed super funds, if you are interested in purchasing gold or silver, and you wanna know how that all works, maybe like me, you've got no idea. Well, I can tell you that David and Katrina and the team from uh, Ainsley, Melbourne, will be uh, coming to Ballarat, Horsham then on the 24th, on the 26th it's Cobram, uh, back here to Albury on the 27th, uh, Albury Wodonga, and then the 28th in Wangaratta. Um, I'll give you all those dates in a show a little bit later on tonight. I will do a show. Uh, I haven't had time obviously to read too much lately. Um, I'm being sent an awful lot of stuff, uh, predictive sort of stuff. I'm. I listened to some stuff today on the uh, three and a half odd hours drive it was uh, to here and um, look some of what's being said really does ring quite true. I've been listening a lot to what's going on with BRICS and uh, the supposed introduction of the US into uh, the BRICS model signed by Donald Trump. Now the only way that he could do that is if he is in fact commander in chief and uh, the president, being the president of the de now defunct and bankrupted US corporation, uh, has no control over anything regarding national financial uh, management. So, okay, great. There is uh, America possibly signed up to BRICS, but we haven't seen anything formally from any of the BRICS members, have you? Maybe it's out there. I've been busy like, looking at wires and driving. Um, but yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's a little bit. Yeah, mate, I can't show them your gold back black sheep at the moment because I don't take it on the road with me. Um, so yeah, I can bring the picture up later, mate. But yeah, I don't take it on the road with me. Um, the gold back is a very interesting thing. Uh, if you haven't seen it, I will show another picture of it uh, tonight during the show. But. Uh, it's a one thousandth of a troy ounce of gold valued at one dollar. So it is in effect a one dollar note backed by the gold that's in it. But gold is appreciating at a pretty, you know, strict and fair rate at the moment. If you've been watching the markets, you'll you know be seeing that gold is certainly on the up. So is silver. Uh, if you're not in the market yet, it's not too late. Get into it if you can. If you've got a spare 40 bucks, buy a coin. If you've got a spare 4,000 bucks, buy an ounce of gold. Um, it's only going to appreciate. Those people who have got into the market uh, in the last month or so have seen returns they could not have imagined possible from their super fund just by turning their uh, big money super or their big super into their own self-managed super fund and just watching that wealth uh, get stronger. And that's all it's done. Now, okay, gold, silver goes up, goes down, but right now it's going up and it's going up in a big way. Uh, there are no real signs of uh, it slowing down at the moment. Well, why is that? Well, they're talking up a world war. What happens when investors uh, get a bit spooked? Times of war and that sort of thing, they go to gold. They go to precious metal. That's where it's safe because your money is always safe in precious metal. And of course, during war, people buy gold, buy silver, the price goes up. That's why you see this steady climb. Now, get in, get in if you can. Um, and if you want to learn more about the ins and outs of it, then come to one of these seminars in Ballarat, Horsham, Cobram, uh, Albury Wodonga and Wangaratta. And then after that, there'll be some coming our way in far north Queensland as well. Uh, the plan is we're heading up there to do something a little special uh, around Mareeba. Uh, hopefully that will come together from around the 10th of next month. And then uh, 
Once that's sorted, we might see if we can't do a couple of gold and silver shows uh, with Ainsley and Cass from Freedom Financial Solutions up in Far North Queensland. I know Townsville are very keen, the My Place in Townsville are very keen to get together there. Um, there's a few My Places up Far North Queensland that we hope to drop into and, uh, and shake a few hands, meet a few friendlies, and you never know, we might be able to convince Darren Bergworth to come for the drive as well, although if I know Bergworth, it'll be a flight, not a drive. Uh, but we'll see what happens. So that's uh, coming up in the next month or so. Um, maybe get some new wire from the battery. The relays uh, all look good at this time. Uh, the dash switches, that's probably my biggest concern. It could be on the blinker stalk. Um, but thanks, David. Yeah, there's a few. We've, we've managed to isolate it. So it is only on the main headlight circuit. Nothing else goes off. None of my running lights, none of that sort of stuff. So. It's definitely on the main circuit, and I wasn't having this issue until I drove 700 Ks. Well, I didn't drive that, I drove about 500 Ks and tried to turn the lights on, and they weren't working so well. So my guess is there might be a bit of burnt wire somewhere, and uh, we're getting that short that way. Um, and that sort of worries me, but uh, if the auto elect can find it, then he should be able to fix it, fingers crossed. So that's the hope. Uh, let me have a bit of a look. Uh, what does Cass think of the goldback? Uh, Black Sheep, she loves the goldback and actually thinks the idea of having... Um, oh, I think it was Cass I was talking to about this. Don't quote me. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was her. Um, thinks that the idea of actually having the gold intrinsically in the note, which makes it no more difficult or no more problematic for you to hold than the plastic cash you hold now. Um, the plastic paper that you hold now and call cash is only worth what's written on it because the government said so. Now, if the government says tomorrow your $100 note is worth $20, then that's what it's worth. Uh, however, if your $100 note is backed by 100 one thousandths of an ounce of gold, then you will have that value embedded in the note. Now, okay, people say, oh, well, there's gold in the notes. People are gonna come and rob me. Well, no. Why would they come and rob you any more than they would for the $20 that's already in your pocket? So take the precautions. It's not worth any more to them as gold. It's just how much it gives the item its actual worth. So don't worry about the security side of it. Now, I've got a sneaking suspicion that those gold backs are put together in such a way that to try and get the one one thousandth of a troy ounce of gold out of it, well, you'd have to be bloody keen and you'd be washing an awful lot of notes to try and make it worthwhile, I would have thought. So, uh, yeah. G'day, Lee. Nice to see you in. And hello, Eve. I haven't seen you in for a while, I don't think. Or maybe my eyes have just been uh, missing the uh, missing the scroll. Um, yeah, Sunflower, night driving is so much better. I so much prefer night driving, and particularly with the amount of light that I have on the front of the, the bus, um, <laughs> uh, I can see a long way. Uh, unfortunately, when I dip the lights, I can barely see the bull bar, which is a bit of a problem. But uh, Vince tells me he may have a solution. Uh, so we're going to maybe pull the headlights out of the thing and have a bit of a look at what's inside the, uh, the headlight covers this time around because at the moment when I turn the headlights on and they work it's almost and I have like the bright lights in them it's like looking at light being pushed through a dirty pool it's a sepia colored tone that hits the road in front of me and peters out sort of three meters in front of me even on high beam it's not very good uh, um, in fact I can drive on high beam and not have anybody flash me that's how bad they are so that's why I've got driving lights and a big bar, which is great for night, but uh, uh, not so flash when you've got somebody coming the other way. But um, we make do, and with a bit of luck and a bit of scrubbing, we might get whatever's going on inside those headlights fixed um, when I catch up with Vince in a few days' time. Uh, yes, Vince and I, well, I think, are catching up. Uh, so looking forward to that, having a little bit of a, uh, a meeting about the radio station. Uh, I'm handing him a two-way radio that you know he likes to fix these things. And, um, and we've got a few other bits and pieces we've got to catch up on. So hopefully we'll have a bit of an update together in the next few days, or it won't be, uh, in fact, it probably won't be until around Anzac Day. So uh, uh, bear that one in mind. Speaking of Anzac Day, now 
there is a plan afoot to live stream a dawn service on the Voice of Freedom channels on Anzac Day morning. Now, it'll be an early one um, because when I say it's dawn, this particular service uh, begins at the time where the Australians were ordered ashore, which was seven minutes past four uh, in the morning. So this service will begin at seven minutes past four on Mount Tambourine. Now, at the moment, we're uh, reasonably confident that there is a fellow going to turn up and allow us to live stream uh, through him, or he wants to be part of it, but he's um, getting some new cameras or playing with some cameras or something at the moment. So uh, if it doesn't come off, uh, my apologies. I'm working to see if I can get some other people. But as you would imagine, uh, Anzac Day is a fairly big day. So getting a lot of uh, other videographers floating around who want to get out of bed at three o'clock in the morning to drive up Mount Tambourine for four o'clock, probably I can't see that happening. Uh, so unless this fella comes good, then uh, that's probably not going to happen. And I'm not sure whether there'll be any kind of a dawn service where I'll be in Horsham. Uh, if not, we might just have one ourselves because I've got a sneaking suspicion there might be a sleeping Vince on my couch in Horsham. Um, we'll just see. Could be a bit of fun. Uh, what else have I got to tell you at the moment? I have, literally have seen no news. So I can talk a little bit about what's gone on, I believe, with these stabbing incidents in the last few days. And I hope nobody's getting too head up about it. They certainly picked the right Christians to attack, didn't they, the Assyrians? Um, very wonderful, wonderful bunch of Christians uh, and very, very dedicated. And in fact, um, what struck me from watching the vision of uh, Ma Mari's attacker walking up and, uh, and stabbing him while he was giving a sermon is the amount of men who immediately came to his assistance and got the attacker. There was a shock, there was a pause, and then this kid was jumped on uh, by a whole bunch of blokes and held there, face down, under pressure for two and a half hours or more until they could safely remove him from the church. Now, I don't know if you've heard this young man's excuses. He's blaming uh, the bishop because he said something about the prophet, insulted the prophet. Um, we have to get past this childish bullshit. This Sticks and stones may break my bones but words will never hurt me did your prophet ever use that or hear that sticks and stones may break my bones but words will never hurt me how soft have you got to be as a 15 year old who apparently isn't radicalized to take such an offense to not go to his elders in his church and to explain what he was going to do, whom hopefully they would have counseled him against such stupidity. But he didn't do that. He grabbed a knife and did what he did. I think by design. They are ramping up the division between us. What would have happened if this young bloke had worked in, walked into a Church of England church or a Catholic church or a Presbyterian church or a Lutheran church and stabbed the, uh, the priest, the minister, the whoever there. Probably not too much. I don't remember the Church of England folk being too radical. Uh, sure, there probably are a few radical Catholics, but most of them don't go to church. So there's not a lot of point in sending your Muslim into a Church of England or a Catholic church because they just get caught. Seems they've done that in the Assyrian church as well. But the difference is, these people are a lot more devote, devoted to their religion, a lot more devoted to their bishop. And they will take this as a very, very personal affront. So calm heads need to prevail. 
don't do what they're urging you to do. All these knife attacks, you might have heard about the one in Melton as well. It wasn't so much a knife, but more a machete and an axe attack at a shopping centre there. More a fight between two gangs of teenagers, which seems to be the big issue of the day in that age bracket. Uh, the postcode wars, they're calling it in some areas, um, where kids, uh, predominantly uh, Africans, are wandering the streets with machetes and axes. They are setting ambushes and they don't mind who they hurt or how they hurt them. Uh, I'm not saying it is only that particular uh, cultural demographic. There are many, particularly in Melbourne, different cultural demographics involved in this and in Sydney. But who is inspiring our children, our teens, to go to war here? Who is inspiring them to pick up a knife and go and start a fight? Are they doing it amongst themselves? Or is there some more senior guidance being given their way? Well, I'm sure ASIO and ASIS would have some idea on all of that. Of course, they wouldn't be able to tell the government anymore because the government has kicked both those agencies out of the National Security Council. Does that sound strange to you at all? Why would the communist Labor government, because it is a Chinese communist Labor government, why would they kick ASIO and ASIS out of the National Security Conference? Only invite them in when they think it necessary? Well, my guess is they don't want ASIO saying, hey, listen, if you do that, it's treasonous. Hey, listen, if you do that, we're watching. We're keeping notes. This Labor government I'm not sure if it is the most corrupt in living memory, but by God, it's got to be up there, doesn't it? I mean, seriously. And the normies out there, are you not waking up yet? Is none of this just starting to look and sound so ludicrous that you're starting to ask questions? God, I hope so. We need you to ask questions. Plenty of places you can come to. Come to my place. Email me, carl at vofhq.com. I'm not saying we've got all the answers, not even saying we've got all the right answers, but what we will do is give you a path to follow and some research you can delve into, which will set you on your own path. Should you choose. I keep going back to it because it's important. God gave us the ability to choose, to make decisions. But incumbent with the ability to make a decision is a consequence to come from that decision. He also gave us the ability to foresee consequences. Many of us make decisions without looking at and determining the possible consequences, both good and bad, from our actions. We need to be more aware of the consequences to our actions. And the consequences can be minor and they can be major. I helped somebody on the side of the road yesterday whose car had stopped. I pulled over uh, just to see if there was anything I can do. I'm not mechanical, but I had a phone, I could ring someone, whatever. Now, it turns out they didn't need any help at all, but we ended up having a great conversation for about 15, 20 minutes um, I found out a bit about them, they found out a bit about me, and, uh, and no doubt I think Niall will be watching tonight at up past six, um, and uh, hopefully he'll come in and join the family. Uh, it, would be, uh, it would be great if we could pick up strangers on the side of the road and have them join the family, wouldn't it? Uh, but at any rate, uh, it was a great consequence. Uh, my decision, I ummed and ahed about it uh, for two seconds, and then, no, no, pull over. Um, and it was great. I met somebody new. I learned something new about an industry I knew nothing about. And, um, and he might have learned a little bit too. A little, little bit of luck he'll head here so, uh, for the night. Oh, it looks like my, um, uh, my chat screen stopped scrolling. Oh, Black Sheep is uh, on song tonight by the look of it. 
uh, it seems that the last 40 years, both sides of the corrupt corporate bird. Yep, couldn't be more more right, David. Uh, I watched. I've watched something recently which ordinarily I would never bother with, right? Would never bother with. I played the game once and enjoyed the game back when I was playing video games, but it's a few years ago. This is on um, Prime, Amazon Prime. There is a program, new show, I think it's eight episodes long, called Fallout. Now, it looks a bit weird. If you've seen the uh, promo for it, there's a ghoul who doesn't have a nose. Uh, there's a girl uh, who will be very familiar to you. She's very funny. Uh, this program is a mixture of, um, well, let's just call it dark humour, shall we? But this program tells you exactly what they're doing to us and shows you everything. It's about a group of people who were locked away in vaults uh, after the cataclysmic nuclear war. And some 220 odd years later, a couple of them emerge out. But there are so many parallels, so many truths being told in this uh, show that I, I commend it to you. Uh, it is quirky, funny, it is a bit gory in places, uh, probably not one for the little kids to watch. Uh, lots of blood, lots of ghouls, uh, lots of grisly deaths, but, uh, and that's sort of why I didn't think I would get into this at all, but uh, after the first or second episode, uh, they're telling us uh, some very interesting things, some very interesting things in there. And if you actually look at the whole Fallout program, uh, from a sort of a top-down perspective and view it as Earth, that we are the experiment, then you might find you get a whole different perspective on this program. So, um, Tony, 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 Tony's in the room. Got to love you, Tony, mate. On Red Alert, nice to have you in too. Isn't there a show on these streaming services called Satan? Uh, no, there's one called Lucifer. Uh, I want to say that's on Netflix. That's always been uh, the devil's channel as far as I'm concerned. Um, except for Drive, for Survi Drive to Survive, although God knows what horrors we're going to find out about Formula One. Um, yeah, Lucifer is on, um, on Netflix. Uh, I think I've watched maybe one or two episodes of it. Um, I can't watch shows like that. Uh, ordinarily, I would have thought I'd be able to, but for whatever reason, I can't these days. It just turns me off. I don't get sick to the stomach or whatever. I just... It's very low. Uh, very low. So, yeah, it doesn't do much for me with that. Uh, hello, Anne. Nice to see you in, too. Uh, just a bit of a catch-up, Anne. Um, I'm in Albury. And I won't be leaving Albury until hopefully sometime tomorrow after my lights have been fixed. I need to see an auto electrician. So uh, having a little bit of an afternoon in Albury. Uh, I'll go off and try and find that auto electrician and probably camp out in front of his place tonight so that uh, I'm there first thing in the morning for him. But um, I just wanted to uh, uh, say hello, let you know that we're still alive. The War Memorial yesterday was an interesting... Um, if not very eventful, trip. Uh, I get a very, very bad feeling around that war memorial. I mean, very bad feeling. Uh, so much so that I'm very uncomfortable being there. It's uh, quite strange. I, I, uh, I found it difficult to drive in the driveway. Uh, I couldn't go into the place. So, gonna have another go. <laughs> That's four goes I've had at getting into that place. And something stops me every time. Uh, so weird, 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 weird. But um, uh, I did use my time for other benefits. And thank you to Cass for lending me the Mustang again. 
Uh, no, I didn't drive it back to Bathurst and do another lap. If you haven't seen the, the lap of Bathurst that I did in Cass's Mustang, it's over on the VOFHQ uh, YouTube channel. Uh, if you're not a member over there yet or you haven't liked and subscribed to it, please do. Uh, VOFHQ uh, at YouTube and FBN Media. F for Fred, B for Bertie, N for Nelly Media on YouTube too. Uh, as many likes and subscribes as we can. Um, I'm going to be uh, putting up a little more content. Uh, I have been filming bits and pieces while I've been running around, so uh, I've just got to get in and start cutting it up. Uh, there will be a little bit of time for that over the coming days, so uh, I will be aiming to get a bit more of that content up on there. I'll put it up on that channel rather than None2K, and uh, you'll be able to have a bit of a look. Uh, Peter Grace, g'day from Pinaroo. Hope you're going well, mate. Uh, I'm still blowing maxi fuses, auto electrician in the morning. So there you go, that's the brief way. Uh, Daniel. Oh, uh, Daniel, do you need my email address typed in there somewhere? Um, somebody please type it in for him. Carl at vofhq.com. Um, I'm not sure if that's the right way or not, uh, what you're actually asking for, but there. <laughs> Funny what you can do with speed control of video. Yes, it is, mate, absolutely. Uh, and what I particularly liked with the speed control was that it actually sounded like a race car then. Because as I was filming it, it was purring, like just purring. Like I said, it's got 10 gears. So I'm cruising up mountain, mountain straight in 10th at 60 kilometers an hour. So. Uh, it wasn't actually roaring, but yeah, when I've uh, tweaked the video a little bit, all of a sudden you could hear the engine, and I particularly like the bit coming up out of the cutting where it kicks back a gear. Uh, makes me sound like a real race car driver. Um, I should, uh, and I can tell you folks, it's very difficult to drive a lap of Mount Panorama if, like me, you do a bit of online gaming in that space. Um, if you have a, uh, an iPad and you like racing car games and good ones, there is one called Real Racing 3. Uh, you will find me in there under the name Ozai. Uh, I've been running Real Racing 3 for a few years now. I only play once a day, um, but uh, I might go for half an hour or so and go for a bit of a, a race around with people all over the world. I enjoy it. It's a great online race game. Um, however, I've done... Over the years, over the last 20 years, I've been uh, at one stage at the forefront of online uh, online gaming, race car driving. Uh, I won an international uh, uh, race uh, or series uh, driving an Aston Martin DB9 many years ago, uh, all online, mind you. So I've done thousands upon thousands upon thousands of race laps of Mount Panorama. So driving around in a Mustang and part of the reason that I decided I'd speed that whole thing up is that you actually hear me talking at various different points through it. And that's me talking my way through the corners um, uh, as you would if you, if you were driving around at speed. Um, so yeah, I thought I'd save you that little bit of embarrassment, but um, it, it is very difficult when you're used to driving around Mount Panorama and taking a certain line into corners, particularly at the cutting. I nearly found myself out on the wrong side of the road, up against the wall, ready to turn into the cutting. So, uh, yeah, a few interesting uh, little moments around there, but trying to stay in the middle of the road when there are no white lines marked, you'd be amazed how many dickheads find that hard to do. Oh, God. At any rate, a uh, bit of fun. And I uh, can't thank Cass again for letting me take her car to Bathurst. Not just for the lap of Bathurst, but I needed to uh, pick up a few bits and pieces uh, so that we could make the, uh, the Heart show happen. Uh, wasn't that interesting? A uh, great bunch of people uh, at the Heart launch on uh, Sunday with um, Barbara and Michael O'Neill. Unfortunately, just as Barbara was about to speak, everything went dead. Uh, I don't know whether that was some uh, nefarious government involvement or whatever, but uh, the plan is to get Margaret on, uh, to get Margaret, Barbara on for a chat uh, sooner rather than later. So working on that. And uh, for those who've been emailing me asking me to get Derek back on, yes, I will. Uh, I've just got to get to um, 
uh, somewhere I can pull up and start doing these things so and not have to deal with other issues with the bus. Uh, once that happens, I'll uh, invite Derek back on and we might even do it at a different time of the day, pre-record it so that he doesn't have those uh, issues. Uh, it seemed to me there was a huge drag on his system uh, at the time we did the interview last week and uh, unfortunately it was just, yeah, basically un unhearable, unlistenable, unwatchable. So uh, I had to pull it. But we will get that back again, I promise. It will just be a bit of a chat. And yeah, there's certainly a lot of interesting information that Derek would like to share. And I'm all for sharing information, uh, provided it's useful information and it's not erroneous information. And I don't think anybody's telling Derek that he's barking up a wrong tree at the moment. Um, I'm not saying he's barking up the right tree, but uh, as long as he's at a tree and barking, like the rest of us, he's doing what he can. I think that's important. We need people to be barking at those trees. Uh, not barking aimlessly, barking with a desire to do better. So, fingers crossed, that can happen. Um, yes, Daniel, yeah, Derek wins. He who leaves the battlefield first has lost. That is the theory in the courts, certainly. Um, we just hope it keeps going. All right, folks, uh, what have I been going on? Half an hour or so. I'm going to uh, shoot back over, make a couple of more phone calls, confirm that I've got this uh, auto electrician sorted for the morning, and then I might go and read up what's going on in the world, and we'll have a talk a bit later on tonight from the inside of the bus where it's going to be bloody cold. Uh, although last night wasn't that cold. Um, never know. We might be right. I'm on the edge of Victoria, so I'm probably going to have to pull the flannies out. Look out. Have yourself a good day, folks. We'll talk later. Cheers.